It's Madden NFL 23 on EA Sports, and we've got a couple teams searching for their first Super Bowl. It's the Buffalo Bills and the Detroit Lions, and it's coming up next. First open in 2002, there's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Buffalo Bills and the Detroit Lions. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. turn there gets him across the 30 up to the 33 well, the Buffalo offense coming out and it is Josh Allen who is at the helm and in this league there are many quarterbacks who have their most success running the ball while there are others who have big arms there aren't too many guys who can do both and at the end of many games this guy leads his team not just in passing but in rushing as well So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Into the air right away is Allen. And that's caught inside the 35. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. They're the favorite, no question. And when they score like that on the opening drive to set the tone, you're the underdog on the other bench. That's hard, isn't it? Yeah, because you can't bring the home crowd into it because you're counting on that to be a part of your equalizer, ride their momentum. But you have to give them something to cheer for. So now what you're worried about is they're better than we are. We can't get going. Are we about to get blown out? Good news, still a long way to go. Extra point by Bass, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. Well, the offense wasn't out there for a long time, but they were out there for a good time. One play, and they're able to hit pay dirt. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. So here are the Lions now coming out for their opening drive. They'll be led out by their quarterback, the guy out of California, the former Cal Bear, Jared Goff. And the tendency for most of these guys is to want to match things right away because they have a lot of confidence in their talent, too. They just saw a big strike against their team, and you know they're thinking to themselves, I can get this back right now on one play. Well, if it's there, you take it, but otherwise, just go ahead and calm your team down. Run the offense, get things going, and see how things settle in. They'll start on the ground with Swift. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Oh, there's plenty of traffic waiting for him up the middle. But give him credit, he tried barreling through anyway. They're fortunate to get a yard out of that one. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. So eight yards on the completion there. And now one yard to go on third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Goff wants to throw on third and long. And connecting here with D.J. Sharp. And he's going to have the Lions first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Goff. That 
throw taken in by Jamison Williams. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it'll be second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. On second down, Swift. And he'll be brought down right on the 50. A gain of three. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive alive. Third and inches, just turn around and hand it to the big guy and let him plow forward and pick up a first down. A lot of people think that the offensive line, they may almost take the play off because they got a big guy back there pushing forward. I think it actually works in reverse. I think they block harder because they love seeing that guy get the ball because he doesn't touch it very often. Clock rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. On first and ten, gone. That one complete. He finds Shutter. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And they move this all the way down to the nine. 39 yards there, a big one. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just sell receivers, find an open patch of grass, and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. To throw is gone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Detroit. A nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Lions respond to that opening drive touchdown with one of their own. Michael Badgley on for the extra point. And now the Bills have it. But he doesn't get far. They're able to stop him. And after all that, the extra point attempt unsuccessful. Well, there's a blocked extra point. I remember playing, and we had one of those go against us. I remember our kicker and our holder told the head coach, just relax, coach. Why are you yelling? Don't worry about it. It's just one point. Oh, my. Those coaches see a point is gold to them because you never know how it's going to turn out later. Exactly. That's why I was just going to say first quarter. We'll see if this has any implications as the game goes on. I still can't believe they told the head coach to relax. <laughs> Bad move. Taken at the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. That's caught by his tight end, Dawson Knox. And they work this well upfield across the 45. They got 29 yards that time. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass on the first drive and comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. Really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You, you kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw when they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations. Ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought, yeah, he might be locked in for this one. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Romeo Lacroix shooting in there and dropping it for the sack. Now that time it looked like he essentially just ran right into the pass rush. Yeah, partner, I'm not much of an outdoorsman, but the fish jumped right into the net, didn't he? Because you've got to make sure that you're deep enough that you can get around the defensive end, have an angle there. But he couldn't do it because he actually cut that one off. Really nice play coming off the edge. Well, he the should have been intercepted. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. 
weren't able to do so. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. After one, a one-point game, seven to six. The Bills with a football as we start quarter number two. Allen gonna go on fourth down. Over the middle, complete. It's McKenzie. And he is going to have the Bills first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. Fourth down conversion plays. You usually think one, two, three yards, maybe ten. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Cook up the gun. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. They've created a nice sustained drive that can play itself down. A nice strong run there that keeps him advancing the ball. On second down, Cook. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. This will be the eighth play of the drive, and it's third and inches. And he'll be touched down here, but not before he does pick up the first. Give him two on the play there, and it's first down, Buffalo. I don't know about you, but I like this call. Third and inches, and instead of worrying about getting it back to a running back and maybe there's some penetration from the defensive front, just go ahead and take it, move forward, and pick up the first one. And as we say often, shows confidence in your offensive line. That puts him in excellent position, first and goal. What are you doing? Yeah, 19. If you're locking down your target, you often turn your back to the quarterback, and you don't see him. Sometimes you open up a big lane for him to hit you for big yardage, and that was an astute play by him to scramble out, see that lane, and burn them for a first down. Cook will score. Touchdown, Buffalo. Just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in, have to report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Tyler Bass now for the point after. And it's up. It's good. Our score, 14-6. to six. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was James Cook capping all of that off with a touchdown run. To the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. Getting set to go again here on offense, Jared Goff trots back onto the field. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. 
The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head, head fakes. Some of them move. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a round, too. To throw again on second down. Gone. He's got his tight end on the corner round. It's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. He had the touchdown on the opening drive. Now he's got a first down. And that was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice game. Jet sweep and nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. On second and nine, Goff. His throw incomplete. At this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Throwing on third, gone. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. Back deep, Naheem Hines. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup. Bounce didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. So for this offense, Charles, remember drive one made it to the end zone. Drive two resulted in a touchdown as well. Now they'll try to make it three for three. Yeah, and you know, they told us all week that this was the plan and this is what they wanted to execute, but did they really believe it would happen this well, this efficiently? I know they'll take it, and afterwards they'll say, there is never a doubt in our minds we were going to be successful in this one. Now a deep ball going to be caught here near midfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. I'm pretty sure any quarterback will tell you it's nice to have a tight end that can stretch the field. And how about him right there, working in the heart of the defense, and they connect on a very nice play downfield, a combination of talent and toughness to go into the briar patch. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Play action. Now it's Allen. And this is Cook with a grab. And he's going to have a first down, and they get into field goal range here at the 29. And they're going to speed things up here. First down, here's the run with Cook. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Turns out to be a great idea to tough that one. Good for 24 yards. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. They scored touchdowns on drives one and two, and now they're trying to make... Then he'll get in. He's over for the touchdown. Josh Allen as the first half is winding down. And the Bills will extend their lead here just before halftime. So, Charles, that's three touchdowns on three drives, and it's just been an offensive barrage so far. Great word, partner, using barrage right there. I'm going to add another word if you don't mind. How about perfection? No surprise that they're leading right now. Absolute dominance throughout this ball game, and no signs of slowing down. Bass on for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21 to 6. So the drive there, five plays, 80 yards. And it was Josh Allen using his legs to polish things off. 
Tyler Bass for the kickoff for Buffalo. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And not really the risk anything here in the half. He'll just take it the other way to the 25. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. The final shot before break here. Golf. He's airing it out for Williams. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. First, though, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Bills. And the ground game has been a big part of why they have this big lead. And you have to figure they'll lean on it a little bit more in the third and fourth quarters. And meanwhile, for the Lions, they did even less on the ground as they've struggled to get the run game going. Final adjustments being made in both locker rooms. They are just about set to get back to football in Detroit. And for the call of the second half, we'll kick it back up to Ford Field and Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. It'll be Lions football to start the second half, and they trail here as we get back underway on EA Sports. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. The Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. By no means certainly are they out of this contest. Two-score game start of the third quarter, but you feel like if they don't get points and then they give up points, then it can become a slippery slope. This feels like an important possession. Yeah, that slope becomes even more slick if you come away empty-handed on this drive because then you give them a chance to extend their lead. You need some kind of points here, even if it's just a field goal. It's what I call one of those calming drives, trying to slow things down a little bit. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let it just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. To throw again on second down. Golf. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Teron Johnson able to pick it. And the Bills are going to take possession of the football. Well, they're certainly in a bad way right now. Not so bad that you can call this one over already, but bad enough that you know you can't toss an interception to open the second half. This just ratchets up the pressure on this team's defense right now. So here's the Bills offense. Now they get ready for their first possession of the second half. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. So after the INT, it's Allen. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. A turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. I know he was trying to get the completion downfield, but the way this game has gone, with a few of the runs he's made along the way, he should have kept the ball and taken it with his feet downfield. That's the big play that shreds the defense. Instead, he thought to himself, I'm a quarterback. I've got to throw it. He bailed out the defense with that incompletion. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. An excellent pickup of 20 yards. That's a big league job there of getting out of the pocket, not panicking, and just buying himself some time. Then he made a good, accurate throw to set up first and goal. This offense continues to be a hot knife through butter. Three drives, three scores, and knocking on the door again on drive number four. Allen, nifty footwork. 
The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Well, he's proven real effective running the football. No one open, don't force it. Just get what you can, and that's what he's done very well in this game. Second and goal from inside the five. Cook is in. Touchdown, Bills. Well, fair to say, they've got something here in this rookie running back, and he's in for the second time in the ball game. And, Brandon, it's a position where there's often a lot of turnover, a lot of competition at that spot, but he's proven to them that he wants to be the bell cow guy that his franchise can rely on. Here's Bass now for the extra point. He's got it, and the lead swells. It's 28 to 6. A drive there of just four plays. And it was James Cook capping all of that off with a touchdown run. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Rush coming. He's taken down. That sack by Tremaine Edmonds. Now the number one mission of any offensive line, you got to protect that quarterback, keep him safe back there. This time, the rush got to him in a hurry. Yeah, this time it's going to come from the middle linebacker because watching the linemen, it seemed to me that they thought he was going to drop back into pass protection, but he surprised them and came on the blitz instead and had a pretty clear run to the quarterback. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Here's gone. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. That's Gregory Rousseau getting in there to bring him down. So, Brandon, we sat in with a lot of coaches. When they talk about things they want to accomplish offensively, I'm not sure that sack and sack are on their play sheet. Sack off in the Lions needing to come up with something here on third and long. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Forced out, and this turns into disaster. He's not going to get forward progress. That'll be a safety. An absolutely dominating series from that pass rush to record the safety. Three sacks in a row shouldn't be possible against an NFL offensive line. But there they are, dropping him on three straight reps, the last of which came in the end zone for two points. So after that safety, now a free kick situation forthcoming as they punt it away from the 20. And this returnable for Hines. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. Well, they got to be thrilled with how they've operated so far in this one. They've got the nice lead and now a chance to score here on three straight possessions. Yeah, and the way that they are rolling, I just don't know how they get slowed down because they certainly are operating at peak efficiency right now. They might want to think about giving some of their backups a little bit of work, though. Let some other guys get on the field and do their thing and save some of this for the next time out. Now a pass hauled in downfield. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. James Cook, 74 yards. And the Bills are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, forget about the weapons out wide. He knows he's got another weapon in the backfield of the passing game, Charles, and he utilized him perfectly on that play. And the offense coordinator showed me something on that play, Brandon, because so often during a game, our cameras find them looking down at their play sheets, and you wonder if they're absorbing anything. He had something specific in mind, and he went to it, and it worked well. well. 
An extra point by Bass, up and good. And the lead grows even larger here in the third quarter. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Detroit's offense ready to take over. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blow out, let's just say it's been unusual. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. You know they wanted, you know they expected. They needed him to be sharp coming out after the half. Unfortunately, he's missed his first three throws. I wonder if he got out late and missed his warm-up time. The whole team did come out a little bit later than usual. I don't know, maybe there's something to that. Must be a heck of a halftime speech. Yeah, maybe just trying to rally the troops back from this deficit. Here comes the Lions punter now. As he'll kick it away for the second time. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Off the bootleg. Allen sliding out of the pocket. Gets this one to Morris. And he's tackled at the 38, but they doubled their yardage. The play started at the 19, and they gave it. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. From all the way up at the 38 now after a good start to the drive. Throwing now is Allen. And the Lions pressure too strong. Down he goes. Flying in for that sack, Aiden Hutchinson. That time, Charles, great job keeping him in the pocket and not letting him escape. And Brandon, I think this was a great example of the front and the back working together, meaning the back covering, no place to go with the football. And the front, terrific job on the edge, so he couldn't escape outside. And then, of course, the inside pressure kept him hemmed in as well. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 43. A really nice gain of 25 yards. And if anyone thinks they're just going to tuck their horns in and pull back off the throttle a little bit, you can forget it. Even with this big third quarter lead, I think this team's going to continue to take their shots downfield, and there's another completion. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. Up the middle, it's Cook. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, 
You're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. Josh Allen, very athletic at 6'5", showing the versatility, picking up the first on the scramble. Partner, even I can figure out who deserves the lion's share of credit for their lead right now because he has been terrific in a dual threat role, really chewing up yardage and getting them points with his legs. Simply put, that defense has had no way of stopping him, and that's why his side is on top. They show run with three tight ends here on first down. They'll try the middle with Cook. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. James Cook, an 18-yard touchdown run. And the Bills continue to run up the score. They lead it big here in the fourth. Well, when coaches come into a game preaching total team effort, CD, I think this is the type of ball game that they're dreaming of. It was pretty apparent early on that they were clicking in all three phases. It's, it's been fun to watch. Yeah, sometimes in the NFL, you end up with matchups like we've been watching here. And when you go back through the early drives, you can just see that one squad is on a different level in this game. Safe to say, we have been disappointed in watching their execution throughout this contest. Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. So here come the Lions now. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, we've seen a lot of NFL games and we've seen our share of lopsided contests, but in almost all of them, both offenses put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense that, frankly, I think the two of us have watched from behind our hands, trying to spread our fingers wide enough to actually see the result. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Goff now looks to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Out of the gun, gone. And this one into the hands of D.J. Shark. And down he goes at the 45 after a pickup of nine. The offense on third down today, two for five to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Goff throwing again. He's going to air one out. And he's caught on the sideline, but he's not going to have a first down. They say he was out of bounds. So a big call there. That brings up four. That's coverage you'd expect to see in a tie game late. Not in a lopsided game like this. They are not letting up. And here now the punter Fox as he sends this one away. And problem spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. Well, they don't really need the points here, Charles, given what we're looking at on the scoreboard, but they've scored on three consecutive possessions, three consecutive drives, and I'm sure that they would like to keep that streak going here and continuing to pour it on. And things have gotten that way in the NFL, haven't they, partner? Because in the old days, people would, you know, they get off the gas a little bit, right? But now, people continue to accelerate. But we'll see what they decide to do as they come out of this one. But the way this game has gone, they've got to be awfully happy with their execution overall. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 70 yards for him on the ground now and three touchdowns to go along with it. Just a terrific run there, Charles, from a running back who is so compact and powerful, and that strength was on display there. Yeah, in this part of the game, the fourth quarter, this is where a running back really has a chance to shine. This is what they've been training for to take over the game down the stretch. The defense, it's been battered all game long, 
And here, this is just a case of a runner imposing his will and deciding he didn't want to be tackled right there. And you can see the distance traveled there after the initial contact on the next-gen stats. Some extra depth of the secondary here. They're in the dime. And they'll take a knee as the clock runs under a minute to play. They gave the nation quite a show, putting up that many points to come away with what will certainly be a memorable win for them. And Brandon, I think it's as simple as this. Some players, some teams, they're just meant for the big stage. And when they get a chance to play in this type of atmosphere, where all eyes are on them and all the lights are shining brightly, they show up and they show out. <laughs> 